Good morning to you. Another day, another Sunday. Welcome. I'm still thinking about light. Um, you know, we were thinking about light yesterday. And uh, just thinking about some verses in John 3, um, verses 19 to 21. John 3, 19 to 21. When Jesus talks about those who are evil shunning the light um, and those who are following Jesus going to it. Um, uh, when you think about, uh, I mean, we, we live in the, I live in the West Country and uh, we have beer caves not far from us, which was a place where they quarried stone for some of the magnificent buildings up and down the country. Um, but it was also used for smuggling and uh, in the West Country, there's quite a tradition, I suppose, historically, of smuggling of contraband. But it was always done at night, in the darkness, so that it wouldn't be seen, in the hope that those who were looking for the contraband runners uh, would not see their lights. And the lights that they carried, they covered, so that very little light was spread from them. Um, anyone who's doing something... Um, uh, secretively uh, loves the darkness but those who are living open lives love the light and uh, yesterday Terry and I were uh, we were listening to an old um, episode of um, Antiques Road Trip we quite like those programs where they compete against each other and uh, try to sell off um, things they bought in antique shop five items and try to sell it for the most profit over the week, if you haven't seen it, I'm sure most people have seen it, but if you haven't seen it, it's quite a fun little programme. Innocent um, and interesting, because they often come up with interesting facts about the parts of the country that they're travelling around. That's an aside. But uh, yesterday's episode that we watched um, was talking about the problems they had in the mines before the advent of batteries and torches, um, when the only lamps, the only light that they had, was the naked flame on a candle. And the, the deeper the mine went, the more gases there were around. And uh, the gases uh, were ignited by the flames that they were carrying. And two men, I can't think what the other man's name was. Oh, Stevenson, it was um, uh, Stevenson, the one who invented, invented it, eventually invented the steam train. <coughs> um, Stevenson and Davy, um, in, in separate parts of the country, uh, science, both scientists invented a way of having a candle-lit light that actually did not cause an explosion. And the safety lamp came into being. A slightly different versions uh, made by the two different men in par different parts of the country. But eventually it settled down and was known as the Davy lamp, Davy safety lamp. Um, uh, but... You can't do, you can't go into dark places without light. You have to have a light. And we live in a dark world, spiritually. It's a dark world, spiritually. And we need light. And just like, you know, we go through the winter and then um, in the spring, the sunlight shines on our windows and all the bits of dirt show up in the stream of sunlight. You've all been there and seen that and thought, oh my goodness, we've got to get get the windows cleaned because they're looking awful because the sun shows up the blemishes shows up the problems with the surface of the the window and the light of Jesus will always show up the things that we do or the things that the ways that we think the ways that we behave that are not are not pleasing to God and his light shines and we never stop learning we never stop developing, we never stop realising that there are things in our personality and in our ways and in uh, the things we've always thought were right that are actually wrong. And God is so gracious. When we come to faith, he doesn't point to everything that's wrong to start with. <clears throat> He'll deal with everything in, in its turn, in his time. And you're never too old to learn something. So if you have one of those days when you think, oh my goodness, I, I'm, I'm so ashamed of myself for thinking or behaving or doing that or responding in that way. Um, you know, 
be, be kind to yourself because the light is there to show up the darkness in us so that we can be cleansed and our darkness can turn to light. We need to walk towards the light, have the light shining on our path, have the light around us to lighten our path, especially in the winter months. I mean, if you're in a rural area, you wouldn't go anywhere without a light. And how lovely that our modern mobile phones have a lamp on them um, so that if we go out anywhere, we can always have a light to guide us. We need the light because you never know what dangers we might be getting close to. And that's what the light of the word is there for. There are pitfalls in this life. There are things that we might do, and we might get involved in, and we might think is perfectly all right because our society thinks it's perfectly all right. But if God's word does not think it's all right, be careful because God's word is written to protect us from terrible dangers for ourselves and for our loved ones um, in the things that we might get involved in and the things that we might do and the way we might behave in our lives. And we need to let the word of Christ rule in our hearts. Let the word, the principles of the word rule, even when it seems that what we really want is something we're not allowed to have. Um, better to follow the word than to go along a path that may be very dangerous. So the light, this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does what is true comes to the light that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been wrought in God. God's light shows up what is good and what is bad. Let his light shine on your life and let your life shine for him. Have a great day. Bye for now.